Hey, what's up? And thank you for joining me. It's Bade Sir. Today we are going to talk about few important things that you must know before you start solving problems on engineering mechanics. As you already know, state of motion of a body, whether body is stationary or whether body is moving with certain motion. State of motion of a body depends on system of forces acting on the body. Today we are going to talk about what are the three parameters you must take into consideration while solving problems on statics or dynamics. Also we will study principle of transmissibility. We'll talk about the exact meaning of system of forces. What do you mean by equivalent system of forces? What exactly resultant of system of forces? Also, we'll talk about resolution of a force, composition of forces, and finally, we'll talk about principle of superposition we may apply to solve problems in statics. So let's begin. There is a box resting on a horizontal surface. A 100 Newton force is applied on the box, so let it be at distance D from the base. Now under this force, let's visualize the motion. So there is possibility that block slides. Of course, we are just talking about possibility. Now the same 100 Newton force is applied on the box very close to its top end. We can define the distance of 100 Newton force from base this way. So let it be applied at distance d dash from base of the box. Now if there is enough friction to prevent sliding, then there is a possibility of motion and this motion will be rotation of the box about this corner. Let's visualize the possible motion, so check it. Box tilts about this corner under the application of 100 Newton force. If force is applied very close to the base of the box, then there is possibility of translation of the box. And if the same force is applied very close to top end of the box, then there is possibility of rotation of the box. So what you should understand, effect of a force on a body does not depend only on magnitude and direction of the force. It also depends exactly where the force is applied. And therefore we say, to understand the effect of a force on a body, there are the three following parameters associated with a force. Magnitude of the force, direction of the force, and point of application of the force. Point of application of the force is defined by distance of its line of action from a reference. Now here is a box resting on a horizontal surface, and there is line ABC shown in the diagram. There are of course infinite points on the line, but we have labeled three points on the line. Point A, point B and point C. Now on this box, a 100 Newton horizontally rightward force is applied at point A. Or in other words, we say that magnitude 100 Newton, direction horizontally rightwards and line of action is line ABC. Because of this 100 Newton applied force, let's say the box is moving rightwards with acceleration 2 meters per second squared. So acceleration of the box is effect of this applied 100 Newton force. Now, it is the same box and the same line I have shown. And not only the line is same, I am showing the same force, but now at point B. You know Newton's second law of motion at school level you have studied. F is equal to M into A. Resultant force is mass into acceleration. Now when the force is the same, mass of the body, of course it is the same body, so acceleration will be the same. So when 100 Newton force is applied at point A, or this 100 Newton force is applied at point B, effect is the same. Okay. Now it is the same box, resting on the same surface, it is the same line ABC. And now the 100 Newton rightward force is applied at point C. And of course at this time also effect of the force on the box is 2 meters per second rightwards. So what you should understand from this discussion? The effect of a force on a rigid body does not change with change in its point of application provided its line of action is unchanged. And this statement is a principle of transmissibility. Effect of a force on a body does not change with the change in its point of application, provided 
its line of action is unchanged in other words a force acting on a rigid body is a sliding vector in other words a force acting on a rigid body can be assumed to be acting at any one point on its line of action so this force you can assume to be acting at point b you can assume to be acting at point c or any other point on line abc i have seen many students getting confused by this statement a force is a sliding vector by this statement let's talk about it here it is a rigid body and a line i have shown that is line ab if i say a 100 newton force is applied on this rigid body along line ab so do you know its point of application yes at which point the force is so any point on the line you can consider as its point of application so you may say force is acting at point a you may say force is acting at point b or you may say that force is acting at any single point on the line ab and therefore we say to understand effect of a force on a body there are three parameters associated with the force which are the three parameters magnitude of the force direction of the force and now listen line of action of the force earlier i told you the three parameters magnitude direction and point of application and now i am saying magnitude direction and line of action remember if line of action of a force is known then point of application of force is known which is that point any one point on the line does that make sense now here is a bent rod abc it is fixed to the ground at point c so here it is force f f is magnitude horizontally rightwards so rightwards is its direction and it is acting at point a so a is point of application what is line of action of this force let's show it in the diagram so line ac is line of action of this force by principle of transmissibility can we assume this force acting at point c for some theoretical purposes can we slide this force f to point c now can we say that earlier diagram that is force acting at point a and now this force acting at point c are equivalent yes that is the principle of transmissibility but be very very careful here is a rod ab and one more rod bc these two rods are connected to each other by a pin that means rod ab and rod bc can move with respect to each other about this pin a force of magnitude f is applied at point a and it is horizontally rightwards now here is its line of action line ac what can be effect of this force f so rod ab possibly will rotate about point b why not rod bc because rod bc is fixed to the ground at point c so only rod ab can rotate here now by principle of transmissibility can we assume that force acting at point c no not at all here you have not changed just the point of application of the force but here you have changed the body on which the force is acting originally the force was acting on rod ab and now you have shifted that force on rod bc and that is a mistake take care whether these two diagrams are equivalent no but one more thing you try to understand for certain reason in a theoretical force analysis if you assume that the two rods combined as a single rigid body that happens while solving problems on statics you will understand that that is a group of bodies together as a single body we can assume under the assumption only you can say that is force acting at point a and the same force along the same line but now applied at point c are equivalent does that make sense okay now while solving problems on engineering mechanics many times we use this phrase a system of forces what's that what do you mean by a system of forces a system of forces is nothing but a group of forces under consideration 
that's all now let's talk about equivalent systems of forces a 100 newton force is applied on a box and because of this 100 newton force the box is moving rightwards with acceleration 2 meters per second square so acceleration 2 meters per second square is effect of this 100 newton force on the box now i have replaced 100 newton force by two parallel forces each 50 newton and what my observation is that box is still moving with acceleration 2 meters per second square now in the third diagram here it is the same box but i have removed now this 250 newton forces and or this 100 newton force and i have replaced by three parallel forces in this manner so what is net force acting on the box 120 rightwards 120 rightwards and 140 leftwards so total force is again 100 newton rightwards and what my observation is the box is still moving with acceleration 2 meters per second square here i have actually added three more but vertical forces two downward forces 45 newton each and along the center line 90 newton upward force so tell me what is total horizontal force applied on the box 100 newton rightwards check and what is total vertical force applied on the box so it's zero so under this six forces again box is moving rightwards with acceleration 2 meters per second square so in this discussion what is our conclusion these four systems of forces are equivalent two systems of forces when acting independently create the same effect on the body then the two systems of forces are equivalent in these four diagrams i have shown four different systems acting on the box but they create the same effect on the box so these four systems of forces are equivalent to each other such how many equivalent systems you will able to create you will able to create infinite systems of forces you can create infinite equivalent systems of forces so a system of forces has infinite equivalent systems when two systems of forces independently have the same effect on a rigid body then the two systems of forces are said to be equivalent to each other a system of forces has infinite equivalent systems and the simplest equivalent system is called a resultant which is the simplest equivalent system the system with this single force so this single force 100 newton force is called as a resultant of the other equivalent systems watch those diagrams again in first diagram there is single 100 newton force acting on the body and body has acceleration 2 meters per second square in the second diagram two parallel forces we have applied each 50 newton rightwards and these two parallel forces has same effect on the body what do you mean by that you have resolved resolved that 100 newton force by two parallel forces in the third diagram in which there are three parallel forces here we have resolved that 100 newton force by three parallel forces and in the last diagram we have resolved that 100 newton force into six forces so a force can be resolved in infinite number of ways to replace a force by an equivalent system of forces that is resolution of the force now watch that last diagram in which there are six forces applied on the box under those six forces box has certain acceleration if you replace those six forces by its simplest equivalent to get the same effect then it is composition of forces composition of forces means to replace a system of forces by its resultant what is total vertical force acting on the box correct total vertical force on the box is zero so i have removed three vertical forces box is still moving with acceleration 2 meters per second squared rightwards because all vertical forces sum was zero force now on this box i have applied four vertical forces now tell me what is total vertical force acting on the box 
तो अगेन इट्स जीरो एंड देर फोर इट इज एज गुड एज नो वर्टिकल फोर्स इज अप्लाइड ऑन द बॉक्स द बॉक्स इज स्टिल मूविंग विद एक्सलरेशन टू मीटर्स पर सेकेंड स्क्वायर वॉट यू शुड अंडरस्टैंड फ्रॉम दिस डिस्कशन दैट इज प्रिंसिपल ऑफ सुपर पोजिशन एंड इट स्टेट्स दैट इन अ सिस्टम ऑफ फोर्सेस एक्टिंग ऑन अ रिटेड बॉडी अ सिस्टम ऑफ फोर्सेस इन इक्विलिब्रियम कैन बी एडेड और फ्रॉम अ सिस्टम ऑफ फोर्सेस एक्टिंग ऑन अ रिजिड बॉडी अ सिस्टम ऑफ फोर्सेस इन इक्विलिब्रियम कैन बी रिमूव्ड विदाउट एनी चेंज इन इफेक्ट ऑफ द ओरिजिनल सिस्टम दैट्स इट फॉर टूडे थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग कंसिडर सब्सक्राइबिंग टू माई चैनल एंड इफ यू हैव लाइक दिस वीडियो शेयर इट विद यूर फ्रेंड Why to keep it to yourself? Share it. Share them.